Trains have been the most popular form of transportation since the 19th century. A lot of people can travel together through it. Train journeys are very safe and the accident rate is negligible. That is why the popularity of trains has not decreased even in this modern era, but is increasing day by day. But so far, several train mechanisms seem surprising to us. Among them, you might be surprised by hundreds of such lines. How can the trains run precisely on certain tracks and reach their destination? Today we will know in detail through this video what is the basic physics behind changing train tracks. Let's start the video with a fun fact before going to the main topic. Did you know that all trains in the world run on electricity except steam locomotives? Now you may say, trains that run on diesel engines don't have any kind of power lines, so how can they run on electricity? But no, trains that use diesel engines as the main power source also run mainly on electricity. First, the diesel engine turns the generator to produce electricity. Then the electricity turns the powerful three-phase induction motors, which directly turn the wheels and move the train from one place to another. Now the question is, why electricity is generated without running the train directly through the diesel engine, then the train is driven by a three-phase induction motor. The main reason for this is that the amount of power required to run this huge and heavy train in the first place would be a problem with the gear ratio if it was to be achieved through a diesel engine, because these piston engines cannot produce instant power. Because of this, many times the engine will stop. That is why the train journey will not be possible smoothly. To understand this more easily, when you ride a motorcycle, you will see that first gear has more power but less speed. So when stuck in a ditch, the accelerator needs to be pushed up a lot, otherwise the motorcycle won't take off. Same thing is almost impossible in this huge train. On the other hand, when driven by a motor, there is no problem with the gear ratio and it is possible to generate instant power through the motor. This makes for a smooth journey. Anyway, let's jump to the main topic. The train driver has no job to change the track. The entire track changing mechanism is hidden within the train wheels and rails. So what is the job of the train driver? The driver has two jobs, controlling the speed of the train by increasing or decreasing the accelerator, and the other is applying the brakes as needed. A slight change in the track can change the entire trajectory of the train. This clever design allows the wheels to change tracks very easily. Let's take a deeper look to understand how it works. Focus on a single track first. There is a diverging branch for changing tracks. After the wheel comes to the center of both the tracks, which track will the wheel go through, red or blue? The travel of this wheel is unpredictable. It is impossible to tell in advance which track the wheel will take. It can go over any track. But if we use a flange on one side of the wheel, we can easily tell which track it will go over. The flange is the safety feature of the wheel, which ensures that the wheel never leaves the track. Due to the presence of the flange, it can now be said with certainty that the wheel will travel on the red track. On the contrary, it is impossible for the wheel to travel on the blue track. If you want to take the wheel over the blue track, just separate the red track by bending it before the wheel reaches the points on both tracks, as you can see. Now the wheel will move over the blue track. That's the genius idea behind changing tracks. That is why flanges are used on the inside of both wheels. If for some reason the left side wheel is about to slip off the track, then the right side flange stops it. Similarly, the left side flange stops the right side wheel if it wants to fall off. Thus, the train moves forward without any derailment. Now let's see how the task is done when both tracks exist. The flange is always on the inside of the wheels. The part of the track that can be bent is called the tongue track. When the tongue track is curved like this, the train will follow the red track as you can see. Since the orange track is connected to the blue track, the left wheel cannot follow the blue track. At the same time, the bright green track is far enough away from the red track. Hence, the right wheel can pass over the red track without any difficulty. In this case, the left wheel is forced to move onto the orange track, and the right wheel follows it. 
As a result, the wheels of the train continue to run on the red track. Let's bend the tongue tracks in the opposite direction. Now the orange track is away from the blue track. At the same time, the bright green track is connected to the red track. In this case, the right wheel is bound to rise on the bright green track, and the left wheel follows it. As a result, the train moves smoothly along the blue track. What a simple and effective design. However, the length of the movable tongue track should not be too long. Therefore, pivot point is used to reduce its length. When changing tracks, the tongue track has a lot of friction with the flange, which generates heat. So the tongue track wears out quickly and needs to be changed after a few days. That's why the tongue tracks are completely separated by pivot points, so they can be changed at any time. And its edge is made very thin to connect well with the main rail. As a result, the wheels can be easily mounted on the tongue track. Also, the length of the tongue track is kept short, so that the tongue track can remain stable even when the train is riding on it. Since there is a lot of friction between the tongue track and the wheels, if the length of the tongue track is too long, it may be displaced, which may cause an accident. However, this clever design does the task of changing track perfectly. But if you try to run a train with the same design, the train will definitely derail. The problem is the crossing. If the crossing point of tongue track and main track is designed like this, the flange of the wheels will hit the orange tongue track, resulting in train derailment. Similarly, when turning right, it will hit the bright green track. So let's see how to solve this problem. To solve the problem, just create a little gap between both the tracks at the crossing point. In this new cross design, when the train runs on the right-hand track or straight track, the wheels can cross the cross junction without any impact on the tongue track. So with this design, the wheels of the train are changing tracks without any problem. Let us observe the movement of train wheels in the crossing area in more depth. As you can see, the wheels drop down while crossing the cross junction. Can you figure out a solution to this problem? Well, we can solve this problem just by increasing the length of both tongue tracks as you can see. As a result, the wheels are supported by additional tongue tracks while crossing the cross area. This solves the drop down problem. But still one more problem remains. Most tracks use a larger radius for turns as the train can easily change track even at high speed. The smaller the angle of attack of the curve, the slower the train must go. Otherwise, the train will overturn while crossing the curve. This is why the turn of the track is taken big, as you can see. Another problem arises due to the large turning radius, and that is due to the large turn, the wheels of the train may move off the track, causing the train to derail. To solve this problem, you may have noticed two separate pieces near the crossing area. It is called check rail. They play an important role during crossing. Check rails are placed near the main rails in the crossing area. As a result, the wheels cannot be derailed due to check rail obstruction. This way, the wheels can move safely to their destination. This is called the nose section. Nose section and wheels have high friction as do tongue tracks. So the nose section is also made separately with pivot points to make it easy to change. The tongue tracks are switched together by switching rods. Initially, these switching rods were manually controlled by people called point men. At that time, a house was built at each cross junction to accommodate point men, whose job was to change the tongue track according to the specific train. But now, due to this modern technology, the work is done by electric motor. So currently, no point man is required at the cross junction. The motor is controlled from the operator's office. The operator office contains complete information and controls the motors from there. Hope you understand how trains change tracks. If you like the video, then definitely don't forget to subscribe and like the channel and turn on the bell icon.